Microsoft Access is different from many of the applications you use. With other applications, you start the application and create your document, spreadsheet, presentation, and so on. You don't have to tell the application how to do that. Take Microsoft Excel, for example. You start Excel and simply enter your data formulas and so on. You don't need to tell Excel that you need a spreadsheet that contains rows and columns, or that you are going to enter text or numbers. You just enter what you want. In contrast, before you can do anything in Access, you should tell it what you're going to do and how you are going to do it. You need to tell it what kind of data you'll be working with, where you want the data to be stored, what you want your data entry screens to look like, and how you want to retrieve the data. Planning and designing are the most important tasks you will perform when you create your database. If you have a good design, it will be easy to enter your data. You'll be able to get any information you need from your database, and you'll be able to revise or expand your database whenever you need to. If you have a bad design, your database can be slow, clumsy to use, and very difficult to revise when necessary. Designing a database consists of five main steps, needs analysis, report design, data analysis, table design, and form design. To evaluate what you've learned so far, see if you can answer this question. When you're done, click Next to learn about how to design a database. During the needs analysis phase, you should look at how people are using the data currently and what additional data they would like to track. What tasks are they doing? Who does what? And when do they do it? Do they track the data on paper or in some computerized system like various spreadsheets? What reports do they create? Is there anything that they aren't doing now that they would like to be able to do? In addition to looking at the current processes and needs, try to think about what you might need in the future. For example, if your database will be used in business, could your business expand globally? Would you ever have more product lines? Would you ever go from being retail only to including services as well? If your database will be used to track non-business information, you'll need to consider other data needs. For example, if you want to track your school football team's information, could your team move to a new division that has different rules? Would you ever want to track other teams like basketball and soccer? While you can revise your database design later, it can be difficult to incorporate new requirements if you don't have a good plan from the start. It might seem strange that report design is the second step in the design process, but if you don't know what you need to get out of the database, you can't determine what you need to put in. First, look at the reports people are doing now and ask which ones they want to keep, which they don't need, and what they would like to have. Next, lay out the reports as people would like to see them. You can change the report layout later, but it's important to see what data you'll need. After you've developed your reports, make a list of the types of data in the reports. For example, some reports might have customer information, including first name, last name, and address. In your lists, note which reports contain each type of data. The customer's first name might be used in the customer list report, the invoices report, and the holiday form letter. After you've listed all of the data in your reports, group the data into categories, such as customer data, sales data, and product data. During the table design phase, determine which tables you need, what fields will be in each table and what type of data you will store in each field, text, numbers, dates, graphics, and so on. The data lists that you create from the reports become the basis for designing your tables. Make it easy to see which tables you'll need and what data should be in each. In the football database example, you might want a player's table to store the player's data, a guardian's table to store the details about the player's parents or guardians, 
and a games table to store the information about each game. In designing your tables, break the data down into the smallest pieces possible so that you can use the pieces any way you want. For example, if the customer information is broken into title, first name, last name, company name, and so on, you can create a form letter with a salutation to Mr. Smith. You won't be able to do that if the first and last names are in the same field. After you decide which tables you need, you can use the reports that you design to determine how tables should be related so that you can get the information you need. For example, you might need to relate your customers table with your orders table so that you can get a report of a customer's orders. In your table design list, you'll want to indicate how your tables will be related. After you've determined the tables and fields you need, you're ready to decide how you want to enter your data. In some cases, you might want a form to mimic the paper form that the user gets the data from. In other cases, you'll want to modify the form to make data entry easier. Sometimes, it might be easier if the user sees one record at a time on the screen. Other times, it might help to see many records at a time in row and column format. See if you can answer this question about the database design process. Then click Next to finish this lesson. Database design may appear to be a daunting task, and it can be if you have an extremely complicated data storage requirement. But if you take the time to design your database before you create it, you'll find that the finished product is both efficient and effective. Studying the templates and examples that come with access is a good way to learn more about table structure, forms, and reports.